In our Sunrise Smart Start, one person is dead and another in grave condition following a shooting on Mosley Road in Greece. According to Greece police, both victims were located inside a residence with gunshot wounds, with one pronounced dead on scene. The other victim was transported to Strong Memorial Hospital. Authorities say this is currently being investigated, but there are currently no outstanding suspects and no danger to the public at this time. In developing news now, Kirk Ashton, the former Hilton Elementary School principal, has been sentenced to 63 years in prison for sexually abusing dozens of students during his 17-year tenure. Due to the felonies he was convicted of, New York State law says his prison term will automatically max out at 20 years. In court yesterday, many parents said they're working on repairing relationships in their own families strained by their son's trauma. Prosecutor Sarah Van Strydonk says as a parent herself, this has been a very emotional journey. You have um, a trust when you put your kids on that bus when they go um, to school for the first time that what is happening in those walls is in their best interest. And we have to do that. that that's how our society works. We have to send our kids to school. We have to trust that they're safe. And this case has rocked everyone. The oldest victim who testified in this trial was 18 years old. 53-year-old William Putnam of Rochester was arrested on Tuesday for allegedly making threats to members of the Islamic Center of Rochester. The U.S. Attorney's Office said that on Monday, a board member received a graphic voicemail from an individual threatening to bring guns and shoot people in the office. Investigators traced the voicemail to Putnam, who now has 12 criminal convictions, which includes two felonies and one violent felony. All right, let's switch gears now and check in with meteorologist Christine Gregory for a look at today's forecast. Christine, which looks pretty good, right? Yeah, it's exciting. Happy to report that we have a really nice forecast in store for your Thanksgiving. Starting off a little bit more on the chilly side, but nothing too out of the ordinary. We're right in the upper 20s to low 30s, but quickly over the next several hours, we'll have a nice southwest breeze. Pump temperatures back up into the upper 40s by noon, and I think eventually we'll have highs in the low 50s. So nice day overall with some sun. We're back in the 40s by tonight, and then by the morning, we are talking about our next chances for some rain showers. So uh, while you didn't need the rain here this morning, you probably will tomorrow, and we'll have a quick another check of what to expect with that beyond the morning uh, in just a few moments here. All right, Christine, thank you. And in just a few hours, the Thanksgiving Day Parade should be getting underway in New York City. And while families here in Rochester might be snuggled up on the couch watching the parade or watching the Bills game, there are plenty of organizations throughout our our community working to make sure everyone has a Thanksgiving Day meal. News 8's Shatira Marsh joins us live this morning to tell us about all the good one local organization is spreading this holiday season. Shatira, good morning and happy Thanksgiving. Good morning, Amel. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too. Yes, I'm at Open Door Mission in Rochester, joined by CEO Anna Valeria Eisman. Good morning and happy Thanksgiving. Good morning. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Tell me about the plans that you guys have in store for today. Well, we have Thanksgiving meal at all of our locations. So right here at the shelter, we'll be serving a community meal from 3 to 6 this afternoon. Anyone can come in and sit down and have a Thanksgiving dinner, or they could take one with them to go. We also will be having our uh, program meals being served at our residential addiction recovery program and our family housing program as well. About how many meals do you expect to serve today? Probably in the two to three hundred range we're thinking between community meals and program meals together. Uh, what went into that preparation process? A, a lot. We've had <laughs> a lot of cooks in the kitchen, so to speak. We've had, um, we're preparing about 20 turkeys uh, to be served today. Uh, we've had tremendous amount of donations and support from the community to be able to distribute baskets of Thanksgiving baskets. Over this past weekend, we were able to provide about 150 of those. And so we have uh, between staff members, volunteers, and um, everybody else pitching in to, to donate the supplies needed to make this meal happen. And speaking of baskets, I understand that you're also preparing for Christmas as well. Yes, we are preparing for Christmas as well, so we'll be able to have um, folks sign up to receive a basket to serve a Christmas dinner for their family. Have you seen an increase in people coming in? We have seen a significant increase in, in our numbers this year, so everyone thinks about the winter and what we call code blue uh, when the weather gets um, a little colder and we, have, we see more people come in um, from their situations of homelessness, and this year we're seeing those numbers since the summer. So so we're, we have a 52-bed shelter. We're sleeping over 70 a night. 
And I understand that there's probably a continuous need for volunteers. Always a need for volunteers. Opendoormission.com and the volunteer tab. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. That's all we have for you. We're reporting live in Rochester, Jatira Marsh, News 8. Back to you, Mel. All right, Jatira, thank you. Time now to go inside the huddle. The Bills are in Detroit for their Thanksgiving Day match with the Detroit Lions. Sports Director Thad Brown has more on the team's third Thanksgiving game in the last four years. For the third time in four years, the Bills will play a football game on Thanksgiving Day. Although it's no fun to be away from family for the holiday, it really doesn't matter that the Bills have a game on Thanksgiving. It's a work day no matter what. Teams that don't have a game will still have a practice. In fact, the closest Josh Allen has ever gotten to having a family Thanksgiving in the last few years was the game in Dallas three years ago. Allen passed for a touchdown and ran for another, led the Bills to an impressive win. Given our profession and, and how we've played this game for as long as we've played it uh, in college and um, high school, and I think most of the guys that we really haven't had that family uh, Thanksgiving or Christmas in a very long time with with everybody, and that just comes with the nature of the business. But uh, again, that going back to a couple years ago, uh, I had so much family in the sands. It was uh, it felt like it, it was kind of a homecoming deal, um, being able to see them after the game and enjoy that experience with them. One good thing about the Bills this year is that they will play in the early slot at Thanksgiving. They will have the 12.30 p.m. game today here in Detroit. And they're playing in a city that's about as close as you can get to Buffalo. So it's possible that the players might be in their homes tonight by 7 p.m. As Jordan Poyer said, it'll be cool to get in and get out and spend the night with family. Here in Detroit is the 83rd year the Lions have hosted a Thanksgiving Day game. A whole lot of fun, big tradition here. There's a parade this morning, a turkey trot, as you might expect. We will have all the reaction and the recap of how the Bills do in this Thanksgiving Day game coming up today on News 8 at 5 and 6. Until then, in Detroit at Ford Field, I'm Thad Brown inside the huddle. Everyone have a great Thanksgiving Day, and I'll talk to you again later this evening. All right, that thank you. The only place you can catch that game at 1230 is right here on Channel 8 WROC. And we mentioned it earlier, the Thanksgiving Day Parade is the event officially kicking off the holiday season. In just a few hours, New York's parade will hit the streets for the 96th time. The parade is synonymous with Thanksgiving, just like turkey and stuffing. The massive parade features 8,000 participants, including 16 character balloons, 28 floats, 1,200 cheerleaders, 700 clowns, a marching band, and of course, Santa Claus. Everybody has grown up with the Thanksgiving parade, right? I mean, even if it's on our TVs, it's, it's actually part of Thanksgiving. The weather forecast in the city is perfect for parade watching. Sunny in the mid-50s with no wind to cause problems for the balloons. This year's event is so big that organizers say it will kick off 15 minutes earlier than usual. Thanksgiving kicks off the holiday party season, like we've mentioned, meaning a lot of friends, family, and of course, the food. According to the Calorie Control Council, Americans may eat more than 4,500 calories and 229 grams of fat on Thanksgiving. There are ways to have a healthier holiday, however. To avoid overindulging, dietitians recommend lowering the fat, calories, and sugar in dishes by using fat-free chicken broth and light sour cream. And while you are whipping up that meal in the kitchen, it's important to keep safety in mind. The Consumer Product Safety Commission says there are more than 165,000 cooking fires every year, leading to around 200 deaths and over 3,200 injuries. Never overheat the oil. Use a oil with a high smoke point. Never overfill the turkey fryer as well. That can cause the splashing and burns if it is over full. They add if you plan to fry your turkey this year, make sure to do it outside or in a place where a possible fire won't harm you or your property. And remember, never fry a frozen turkey.
Christine, you've been saying all morning is perfect. Yes, it really is for the holiday, and we can't ask for anything uh, more than that, right? Mm -hmm. I definitely think uh, we're going to have a nice day today. Heading out the door this morning, though, I do think you'll need both the sunglasses and the heavy jacket. It's a cold start. A lot of us sitting right around 30, but we'll have some nice sunshine throughout the morning and even into parts of the afternoon. Highs will rise into the upper 40s to low 50s. I do think this will be the warmest day of the work week, so lots of people, uh, if you want to get outside for the holiday, you can. Looking ahead to the weekend as well, it's dry to start with rain returning on Sunday. All right, Christine, thank you, and thank you so much for watching News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update is coming up in 30 minutes. CBX, CBS Mornings is next. Happy Follow Thanksgiving, everyone. Wherever you are, on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.